Hey banditos, welcome back. So I put out a full guide on the best descendants to take on Deathstalker. And while we covered some solid picks, I have to give a special shout out to a build that deserves its own spotlight. We're talking about Bunny. Yup, Bunny, our speedy electric skill queen, rocking what we're calling the shock and awe unstoppable Bunny build for the Deathstalker boss fight. If you want to help the team stay alive by keeping Deathstalker's chaos under control, then this is going to be the build for you. Bunny not only brings serious speed and electric damage, which death is weak to, but with this setup, Bunny's immune to the debuff and shrugs off most of the boss's biggest threats. Now, this build was featured in my Ultimate Deathstalker guide, but honestly, it's so good that I didn't want the community to miss out on the details, so I'm giving it its own video. Stick around because we're about to break down why Bunny is your secret weapon in this fight and how this build will have you running circles around Deathstalker, literally. So, let's do this. <laughs> So here's a high level look at what the build is. Take your screenshot and stick around because we're going to run through the details and exactly how this build works and why it works. But before we get into the nitty gritty of Bunny's build, let me put things into context by doing a quick recap of what you're up against with Deathstalker. She's got a variety of damage outputs and if you don't know how to deal with them, you'll be spending more time on the ground than actually dealing damage. So here's what you need to look out for. That poison debuff. The most dangerous mechanic it debuffs your hp leaving you vulnerable to one shots but bunny's shields on this build makes her immune to this so you can keep dealing damage without worrying about your hp bar going bye bye and she's got a self-sufficient way to heal her shields green laser beam this wipes out most shields and health in seconds but bunny's speed lets you dodge this like a pro so just keep moving and then there's the ghost skull launcher these homing skulls come out at you in packs and will chase you down around the entire map. But Bunny's mobility runs interference on these for the team, so the team doesn't stop shooting the boss. Now for ads, the boss uses the Kingfishers and Bunny needs to clear these so the team is always supplied with consumable resources. And this is really easy for Bunny to do. It's what she does, so it's pretty much passive. So there are these creepy totems during the immunity phase. This is where the team takes all that Deathstalker has to dish out. And now a new one, the Screamers. These are like mortars that explode and release spirals of poison that are very hard to evade. Basically impossible to evade if they land in the zone the team is trying to hold down. Bunny's job is most critical here. She can stop the mortars mid-air before they reach the team, all while deleting green skulls and clearing ads so the team can load up and stay alive and get ready to eliminate death when she comes out of her immunity phase. And because Bunny's fast, her job is to also locate these totems for the team so they know where to post up. But the combo of these covers all your bases. You have damage, crowd control, survival, and speed. With Bunny's mobility and electric prowess, your team will be able to focus on Deathstalker while she handles the threats around you. All right, that's the rundown. Let's get into the Bunny build specifics and show you how to turn her into an unstoppable force for the stalker fight. Let's do this. And now Bunny. Bunny runs defense and technically, I think she has the hardest job. When I say she runs defense, I mean she is blocking damage to the team with her damage. I have made a perfect build for it. She never runs out of energy, sustains damage on the boss, clears adds, and most importantly, lets the shooters keep shooting. By doing that, she's making everyone's survivability go up dramatically and their job way easier. And I made Bunny a hard to kill Bunny, but she still is the most vulnerable on this Giga Chad team because she's throwing herself at all of the threats. So although she is tanky, if she takes too many direct hits, especially of the bones, then she's just gonna go down. And that's why this does take somewhat of a skilled player. Anybody can do it. It takes practice. You get into a rhythm, very fun to use. Okay, here's a very special build. Let's get into it. So let's look at our values first. So as you can see, she's got 14,000 in shield. Crazy high for Bunny because she's relatively squishy. So this is about as high as I can get her. And she does need to actually put out damage. And so I have tuned this build to have enough damage to clear ads 
easily as well as those stage 5 clingers and the screamers. But as far as damage on the boss, it's about consistent damage. But don't be overly anxious on putting damage to the boss. It's great if you do, but it's more important that you clear the adds so that your DPS team can spend 100% of their time shooting the boss because this boss has serious skill damage reduction on her so your reactor does matter here i'm running the thunder cage i got electric and singular skill cooldown and duration it's important that i have my skill uptime but also i wasn't able to farm a special reactor just for this fight and then otherwise i'm rolling into hp everywhere you're not going to have to worry about mana with her i'll show you why but max hp everywhere is what we have here and then consumable drop rate is really important because she can heal herself without a health bar and i'm going to show you how we did that so max hp here and then consumable drop rate and then i got a max shield side effect but you don't have to have that it is a nice to have and then an annihilation with max hp in defense and then here toxic resistance item acquisition and hp and then the thunder cage she's not really using it she's mostly holding it but that's what it looks like in case you do shoot so there are a couple of moments where she puts out some shots but very busy hopping around like a bunny does all right here's her build it's a bionic fuel ultimate bunny build so you're going to want to run this mod on your ultimate bunny so it decreases your speed of light but consumes hp instead of mp so mid air maneuvering is really important on this one make sure you run this mod it's not going to cost mana anymore it's going to eat your hp but guess what we don't have any HP or it's at level one and it always stays at level one. What's really cool is it eats nothing. It is free fuel, basically the way we have this set up. Even with the debuff, it doesn't hurt the skill. It is unlimited running. So Biosync Shield is really important. We saw this earlier on, I think it was Enzo. This is how she can heal herself in big spurts because you don't know if you're gonna have a Eugen on your team and she is the most vulnerable at 14,000 shields. I know, crazy. She takes a lot of damage. As many times you accidentally run into the bones or you take a laser, but it's mostly the bones because you're jumping around a lot and you could accidentally land like right in front of the bones or you're really close to the boss. So, so you're gonna see all the same values. So we're gonna have HP conversion here for more shield, more HP here and then increase shield and then overwhelming shield, which is converting all of our HP into shields, just like we saw in all the other characters. So now the damage. So I had to tweak the damage to make sure we had enough to clear those ads. So we have the new mods that they gave us as well as the classics, but no crits. And that's good. We're not gonna run crits on her anymore anyways. So I got singular amplification. We get skill power modifier and then focus on electric. So that does give us some cooldowns. We do need that for our third skill and then focus on singular, same reason. Then electric amplification. So more electric skill power. So we got our four power mods right there. And then skill expansion to give ourselves even more range. So this is as good as I can get our range without sacrificing survivability. So hopping around is required to make sure you're catching all of those floating skulls. Okay, that's Bunny, tons of fun. Finally, we've reached the end of this video. And what do you think about this new boss? Thank you for hanging out with me. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. One and only. And this was another episode of The First Descendant. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The First Descendant. And if you like videos like this, check out the one I have recommended for you right here. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. When you buy or download anything for the first Descendant, be sure to use Tux's creator code to support the channel. Easy peasy. Follow me.